is this a pipe dream? Are we on, you know, looking for the unicorn in cloud cuckoo land going, oh, this is something we can change? Or do we need to recognize that you have to have some kind of gamification, I suppose, if you want to succeed? Oh, God, no. Welcome to How to Take the Lead, the podcast where we challenge the myths and stereotypes of what it means to be a leader today and help you to succeed in post without compromise. I'm Lee Griffith. And I'm Carrie Ann Wade. And together we will be your guides, questioning everything we've ever learned about leadership, sharing our experiences along the way and inspiring you to make a real impact in your role. Visit howtotakethelead.com for show notes, past episodes and to join our community. Enjoy this episode. Hello and welcome to another episode of How to Take the Lead. This is the penultimate episode of the series, can you believe? I mean, there will be a sneaky bonus, I'm sure, because that's just the way. But yeah, episode nine. Um, Thank you to everyone who's listened and supported the series so far. We really appreciate it. Those that have joined us on YouTube, you can watch us on YouTube. Hello, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Um, those that have been part of the Substack community, you can still sign up and join that. We will be carrying on the conversations beyond this series. And um, so if you want some extra bonus stuff in between our season breaks, then absolutely do get signed up. And I think book book club will launch soon, maybe. Yes, very exciting. Um, and yeah. We'll still be on the socials and all that. I feel like I'm saying farewell. We have still got this episode and other episodes. So what is this like... vibe? <laughs> How are you today, Kalyan? I'm all right today. I'm all right. There is work and life stuff happening that's made me mm-hmm. feel stressed this week, but at the same time made me reflect on what's important and where I can have impact. And it's made me think, need to start taking some of our how to take the lead advice yeah. uh, about a few things so it's yeah it's been an interesting slightly exhausting week but I am looking forward to this conversation and um yeah it's just made me think a lot of what we've talked about particularly in this series of how to take the lead is kind of playing itself out and I feel like I'm ready to deal with it because we've been able to have our conversations Lee so that's good yeah <laughs> And I, f- I feel today's conversation is probably a bit apt and because um, <laughs> we, we're talking about power and mm. the concept of leadership. Is it all about the power? And so to, I suppose to kick us off, I was doing a bit of research around the concept of power and realised that actually there's far more ways that power shows itself than even I realised. So. Back in 1959, French and Raven did did some research and identified five sources of power, and then that's been built on ever since. So if I just do a quick rundown of the different types of power that might yes. be showing up in leadership, obviously the, the positional power, so your seniority, reward power, so when you give something to someone to get a result, expert power, so your knowledge and expertise, um, Referent power, so how you gain and use influence. Coercive power, so the opposite of reward, using that threat to get results. Informational power, which is different to expertise and probably seen that when um, you've got people who might have a lot of organisational memory, for example, and and really hold on to that. Connection or networked power, so the the who you know um, as opposed to the what you know. And I'm sure there are many others as well. So, A, that was really interesting in and of itself, that that power does show up in so many more ways than you perhaps think in in the first glance. And we'll certainly get on some of my perceptions or misperceptions around power as we get into this conversation. Um, And you do see leaders who do undoubtedly great things with their power, but... You also see others who let it go to the heads and it creates this negative and destructive culture. You know, they go on a power trip. That is literally, you know, power the crazy, place, isn't it? Yeah. Power yeah. crazy, power hungry, all of that. <laughs> so I want to start today's episode to explore a little bit, Carrie Anne, around your awareness of, uh, as you've been in leadership roles, how aware you've been of the power that you've had. 
Well, uh, what a big question to start yeah. with. And it's really <laughs> funny because I've reflected since we started to talk um, and we did the prep this episode thinking like, what, where do we want to get to this conversation about power? And it really helped me to reflect on A couple of things, I guess. So I guess as I've become more senior throughout my career, I've had a really high awareness of that positional power Mm -hmm. um, and that kind of hierarchy and the fact that I'm in a senior position and I've got the job title and I've got the accountability. And I think probably being aware of, um, you know, how do I how do I use that positional power um, to have an impact and to deliver things? how do I want that to play out in my immediate team? So I think I've always probably described myself within my immediate like communications teams that I've I've um, worked with as somebody who's not particularly hierarchical. I'm there to be accountable and I'm there to have people's backs and I'm there to represent us. But actually, I don't really like that very linear, mm. like hierarchical style of leadership and management. Um, but I guess I've also been aware that I have stepped into those more senior positions for a reason and um, need to find a way to kind of use that position or power to have influence, I guess. But as we talked and I thought about this episode, there was quite a lot of areas where I thought there are either things that I'm really good at or things that I've not been so good at that I haven't really aligned or thought about from the point of view of a power dynamic. Mm. So there are a couple of areas that you've talked about in those descriptions of power where I think yeah I feel like actually I have some real strength there but I've never really considered those strengths aligned to the idea of power so I think in terms of connection that's something that I'm actually really good at and that I spend a lot of time building and developing my own network but that I also uh, would like to think that colleagues and others would say about me that I'm quite good at connecting other people up and helping them to think about their network and how they can have, for me, it's always been about like, how can they have greater influence and impact through building those connections? Like if I put those two people together to have a conversation, like what's the positive that's going to come out of that? And I guess now we've been talking, I see that that is about power, isn't it? Like what's the power um, in bringing those people together, hopefully in a positive way. And I guess the other bit is around that kind of influence peace and feedback like I feel like some of my natural skills and preferences are about um, trying to influence facilitate mediate build relationships uh, surface things in discussions in a way that helps people feel like they can have those conversations and start to think about that influence so there was definitely Mm. things for me that I'm like oh I hadn't considered that from the point of view of power but there are areas that you've mentioned that feel like they fit with kind of my style of leadership Mm. but there are also times when I reflected on the fact that there are things I haven't stepped into enough so you talked about expert power for example and I I feel like I hear this a lot about my profession actually through the mentoring that I do and through my own kind of professional background and working with communicators that often there's this sense that um we're not stepping into our expertise enough or our Mm. expertise is not valued. And actually what I hadn't thought about was how that diminishes the sort of power balance in relationships by not owning it and stepping into that expert space and, you know, being able to say, no, my expert professional opinion is this because I've got years of experience and knowledge and and skills. So it brought up loads for me, actually, that I could probably waffle on about for ages, but I, I found it really interesting to reflect on those different types of power um, and mm. kind of how that's played out for me in my leadership career. So I'm keen to know more from you as well. Yeah, well, before before we move on to me, um, I, I def- <laughs> it's not I all about you. Yeah, <laughs> I, I definitely won't be as eloquent as you or, or considered as you. But I'm, I'm interested in, I suppose, maybe the sides um, that maybe have highlighted to you the extent of your power so you've picked up on the things that you've reflected on and the actions that you take but are there things that on reflection that that the behaviors or um signals from other people that that's indicated you have a power that you weren't aware of um do you know it's probably been more recent but actually having some really frank straightforward feedback about some of those things have really Mm. highlighted it and having people say did you know that 
you do this and I really admire the way that you do that because I've never felt able to and and it has this impact in a space so actually I've been lucky enough that a few people have bothered to give me that that feedback and that has been positive stuff that I'm talking about and kind of gone oh I've noticed that when you operate in board discussions for example that you are really skillful at doing this and did you realize because the impact it has is that it brings people back to the pertinent point that we need to take some action on for example and I guess that's helped me to reflect on whether I've honed that skill whether it's nature versus nurture or whatever and it's been helpful to have people reflect that because it does kind of highlight to you I, I am having a level of influence or I'm exerting a level of power um, mm. to kind of uh, get to a decision or take an action that perhaps I wasn't quite so aware of myself I think there probably have been times in my career where um, I reflect on the positional power piece actually where maybe my desire to not be so hierarchical mm -hmm. and not exert those positions of power have almost led to a bit of inertia or a bit of like non-action okay. because um, I think my style has not been about empowering people and giving people autonomy and um, wanting people to aspire to certain things or operate in a certain way but almost come to that conclusion for themselves mm. and actually what I've had to learn through my career is that there are just some people I would say that actually respond better to being told what to do <laughs> than mm. being given that free reign and because that hasn't been my natural style of leadership to exert positional power and be like no I'm I'm the boss, I will never say it like this, but I'm the boss and this is what needs to happen and I need you to do X, Y and Z because often I haven't always felt comfortable in that space mm -hmm. and operate in that way. I've probably done a bit of a disservice to those people who need that level of kind of direction and that level of being told these are exactly the things I need you to deliver and some people do operate better in that space, I think. And I think COVID was a really good example of when everyone was working towards a common goal and there was a command and control structure as much as that was a challenge for some of us in my sector to operate in that way other people really shone because it was just mm. really clear like these are the actions I need to take this is the end result I need to get to you know that really directive way of working which I think sometimes has challenged my natural style of leadership and I probably have yeah not not been as aware until it's too late that I yeah. maybe haven't helped people to deliver what they could deliver through not being so directive, if that makes sense. Mm. I feel like I've waffled a bit there. No, no, it's 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 an interesting <laughs> one. And hi hierarchical positional powers, I think, been the one, A, I've probably been most aware of, but, but also I've been the most uncomfortable with. And it's a, it's been a really interesting reflection point for me because I've always been ambitious. I've always wanted to be at the top of my game and achieve the ultimate kind of position that I can within my area within my um, kind of profession and did that so there was obviously something within me that wanted positional power although I didn't couch it like that I wanted to be the ultimate expert um but I hated using my title um I didn't really like reflecting other people's um authority either I, I've very I, I would purposely not use people's titles if they said oh I'm you know doctor this mr that or whatever working in, in a health setting I refuse to I would just call them Bob Dave Jill whatever the, well obviously if that was their name I'd just <laughs> randomly, randomly, randomly calling people Bob <laughs> <laughs> but I had this thing around you're no better than me you've done a different education you've got a different role mm. but I'm not going to put you up on a pedestal by using this name and I hated that power play that that would go on in mm. clinical situation but my reflection now is maybe I was actively trying to undermine their power and um maybe that was being disrespectful in and of itself so that's, that's been an interesting one and then my other thing around I was undermining my undermining myself because I used to do the well there's no point me saying what my job title is because no one's going to really understand what that what that job does and, I, and to some extent I still agree with that and I say that when I work with a lot of leaders who focus so much on their job titles like, well, what does it mean to anyone what does that you know 
we all have these grand titles that doesn't actually say what what you do and mm. doesn't mean anything if you if you're having to go into a whole explanation around what your job is to your nan or to someone down the pub you might as yeah. well just lead with that to begin with like let's get rid of the title <laughs> but yeah so so that's been an interesting reflection around the undermining part of it yeah and it is funny isn't it because it's a guess it's that level of comfort isn't it because as you're saying I was like oh, yeah I can definitely remember times even like recently where I cringe at having to say that I'm a director and then there's a mm. bit of me then there's a bit of me that's crossed at myself because I'm like but I've worked really hard to get to this yeah. point in my career yeah. so why am I why am I cringing about it and actually I'm wanting to role model to other communicators that they can step into that leadership space so if I'm not comfortable to own it for myself like what does that say but it uh, yeah I think it comes with a lot of complexities doesn't it about the cultures we've worked within the teams we worked with in our own experiences about how comfortable we are then stepping into that space and that conversation about power and I just I don't know if it's the word power that makes mm-hmm. it feel cringy because when I thought about influence and expertise and connection I felt really comfortable with those yeah, yeah. concepts that are still about power but then yeah. when it was power I was like oh no it feels a bit icky yeah so do you think you can successfully lead if you don't have power? Obviously, if you're in a senior management position, you have positional power, which we've, we've already yeah. referenced. But can you perhaps be a positive and transformational leader with just your position? Or do you need a blend of those other powers to be in play in order to truly succeed? I thought about this and I and I absolutely am of the opinion that you need that blend, I think, mm. because we can probably all either name people we've seen in like high profile public positions or we can uh, think about our own experiences of leaders that we've worked with where just because they have a senior position, just because they are a senior leader in an organisation, it hasn't meant that they have actually had any sort of positive impact as a leader um so I don't think that just through having the title and having that hierarchy and that positional power you you can be an effective and impactful leader because I think so much of what we've talked about through how to take the lead and in other conversations has been about your ability to influence your ability to connect with people and build trust, for example. So Mm -hmm. I bet we've all got examples of people who have the positional power and you talked about being power crazy and going on a power trip and who've maybe used that power to bully or be, you mentioned coercion, didn't you? Like Mm -hmm. coerce people into things because they're the boss. So you must do this because I've told you to because I'm the boss. And actually, when that goes unquestioned, I, I I think that person might think that they are exerting their power and that they're having an impact. But fundamentally, I think what it does is break trust and alienate yeah. people and people get into a mindset where they're either like, well, I'm just going to do it, but I'm not, I don't actually really care that much about it, but I just need to get the boss off my back or mm-hmm. I need to, do, do you know what I mean? So I, I feel like, just using positional power can create really negative impacts and scenarios and a a really challenging culture so I think to be impactful and have that positive impact you need to have a blend of all of those other things and I think you can have a blend of all of those other things and be perceived as and have impact as a leader without always having the position of power in the hierarchy yeah oh yeah yeah, sorry I'm kind of going all over the place with my ramblings but my answer was I think you need the blend of everything and it isn't just about positional power to to be able to lead well no almost if you were to remove any kind of power the positional one could be the one most easily removed yeah Yeah. absolutely yeah yeah and I suppose the skill of a leader is recognizing the powers that they have more broadly than just that hierarchical one and then how they use them so if you look at some of those powers I talked about at the very beginning the most effective ones probably are as you've said like influence your knowledge your expertise how network you are whereas the least effective one from a leadership perspective are things like coercive power Mm. because Mm. that that fear fear leading by fear and leading through punishment 
probably isn't going to get results. It might get a short term fix. Yes. And we see that with some with some leaders where they come in, they might do a turnaround and they they put the fear of God in everyone and and something might happen, but that's not a sustainable way to lead. Mm-hmm. And then you see all the other metrics start to fall as the culture erodes, as trust erodes and all of that. And then you see morale falls, performance falls. And we've talked about that in the, the communications episode. And previously, so the the metrics that can fly if you use the wrong kind of power in the wrong wrong setting. So I suppose as a leader, you need to have, and we talk about this word a lot, clarity mm-hmm. in what you're trying to achieve, who your stakeholders are, what your core values are, and the, and your beliefs around that as well. And then use the values and um, the powers rather that feel most aligned to yeah. achieve that. That's kind of would be my sense. Are you a communications professional experiencing a specific issue or blocker at work right now? Do you need some time and space to focus on finding a solution to an immediate issue you're facing? If this sounds like you, then a one-off mentoring session with me, Carrie Ann, could be perfect to help get you back on track. In this session, we'll provide the clarity you need to get straight to the heart of the challenge and offer a fresh perspective on actions that you can take. To find out more, visit cats-pajamas.co.uk. What if you feel powerless? So, you know, there are situations where you feel something's out of your control and it maybe it's undermining your ability to lead. How how do you tackle that? Oh, I think that's a really challenging one, isn't it? Because uh, so much of it is dependent on, I guess, uh, the culture in your organisation where you... I don't know, there's there's something for me that, oh God, there's so much in this. There's something for me <laughs> that is partly about, um, is it just you that feels powerless? So mm-hmm. actually, dependent on what that situation is that's making you feel like you don't have any power, can you recognise that that is individual to you and therefore something that you might need to identify? Like, how can you regain that power? Is that possible does it need to be possible? Is there a different mm-hmm. way that you can reframe what that situation is to your benefit um, and to help you achieve your specific purpose? Um, and we've talked lots in other episodes, haven't we, about like alignment and actually is it a sign that things are not aligned and maybe this is not the right environment for you to thrive as a leader or, or have that positive impact that you want to. But also if, if trying to evaluate whether or not actually there's more of you that feel powerless and what's that all about and actually if collectively there was an opportunity for you to come together and maybe use your collective voice to perhaps challenge something that's happening in your organization or a leader who is leading by fear or coerciveness or or whatever it might be that is there a strength in numbers and actually is there an opportunity in that space for you to think about how how that style or approach of one leader is impacting on a group of you Mm. and move it away maybe a bit from that emotional element of how that's making people feel but to focus it on the performance so it's almost like if organizationally we're striving to achieve x the way in which this leader is impacting on a group of us means that we're we're never going to achieve that so how can we have a conversation about what might need to change from a leadership point of view to enable us to deliver what the organization needs from us but I mean all of that sounds like I'm being really flippant because none of that is easy to do but I think it's about having that awareness and that ability to be able to identify what those issues are and where there may be opportunities to take action either individually or, or as a collective to try and address some of those problems. Yeah I think that's that's really helpful isn't it it almost builds on some of the points that we talked about in the difficult conversation episode around how you perhaps take some of that emotion you might be feeling out of the situation to be able to tackle it. And also sometimes it is about bringing awareness to an individual when they might not be aware that they're making you feel powerless and then just identifying through evidence base, not that emotion um, of, of how you feel disempowered to, to be able to do your role could actually be a really positive step obviously if it is something that is 
more toxic and more challenging than that, then then there might be no use in you trying to tackle it with that individual head on. That then there are, well, what are your other recourse um, of actions? Is it something, you, as you said, collectively you do as a group? Is it often in organisations there are individuals you can go and raise concerns with if you think that there is an actual harm being done mm. by this person that's, that's taking power away from others? Um, there are external ways and means that you can bring light to a situation as well. But um, I think that's where your support network comes in really. What's the word I'm looking for? Really helpfully handling. <laughs> it's really important. That's where yeah, your support yeah. network is really important. That's the word. <laughs> so in my exploration of power and leadership, and as I've already alluded to I I definitely have come to it I suppose in quite a negative space um and we will cover this because it is important but I'll, I'll get to that in a minute um we've talked about it being a dirty word and feeling a bit bit icky and we conversely recognize that power exists in all sorts of ways um obviously it's influenced by the privilege that you have by the voice that you have um so even those people who say they don't care for or want power or those who perhaps advocate on behalf of others who have less power there's a reality isn't there about there is still power in play in in even in all of those situations regardless of how you're trying to position your own power so if you're someone that is uncomfortable with the concept of power and the power that you have, how do you start to get comfortable um, with the power that you have as a leader? And I suppose harness that to use it for good. I think for me, it's about purpose and impact. So if mm. you're uncomfortable with the... I, I think we need to get to a space where um, we, we have to accept that power is a is a thing it's a concept it's an actual thing that is is happening all around us so we either have power or we don't in different circumstances and I guess it's about acknowledging and accepting that but if you're uncomfortable as a leader with the notion of power or the term power because it feels like that dirty word that's like got that negative kind of connotation about it I think it's about reframing that so actually mm. what you are considering is what is your purpose as a leader? And we talked, you mentioned clarity, getting that clarity on that. And what impact is it that you want to have and that you feel you can have because of the position that you find yourself in? So for me, I guess I feel quite uncomfortable with the terminology around power because that doesn't feel like it fits with my values and the language that I like to use. So I guess for me, I think about as a leader, what's the influence and impact that I can have? Mm. And mm. where where am I in a privileged position where I can actually, I already have a seat at the table as part of those conversations, for example, or I am in a position where my role enables me to be somewhere that means I can challenge bad behaviours or people's assumptions about um, the way certain things might land in an organisation or the impact it might have on other people um, and where do I need to identify and recognise where I could advocate for other people if that's what they would like me to do so I think there is something about getting that balance because sometimes I think you can assume you should be the voice for the people who yeah. don't have as much power or influence or impact as you Actually, that's not always the right thing to do but actually then it's about okay how do I create the space for those people to have their own voice and influence yeah. and impact so I, I think it's about recognizing that that power is there that you might feel uncomfortable with it because we've always probably looked at power from that point of view of it being more challenging and more negative because we talked about being power mad power crazy but I we wouldn't say things with those negative con connotations about wanting to be impactful as a leader, would we? We'd see that as a no. positive thing. So no. I think for me, it's almost about that reframe. Um, yeah. yeah, reframing that notion of power in your head about what does that mean for you as a leader in delivering your purpose and engaging with other people to help deliver that bigger purpose for your organisation. 
Yeah. And and you're completely right. Reframe is the the word that came to my mind because power doesn't mean control. And often that's what we we Hmm. kind of join them to together. Um, But it does mean impact. So yeah, that that reframe is important. And we talked in episode five around using your voice for good. That is you using your power, Mm -hmm. albeit not in a, oh, look at me kind of way. Here's my shoulder pad. Let's get on with it. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know why I had to do do the action whilst I was talking. (laughs) That's Um, for the YouTube viewers. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And there's something, we've talked about this often around if you overuse your strengths, it becomes a weakness. And it's the same thing around bringing awareness to your power. If you overuse your power, it can become um, a force not for good. I'm not sure that's the sentence I want to say, but I can't think of a better one. <laughs> we, know, we know what you meant. We know what you meant. <laughs> so it's all about your self-awareness, isn't it? And, and reframing in a way that... That feels comfortable, but I don't want people to feel too comfortable because there's got to be a bit of grit and challenge there as well for you to truly step into the space and, and own it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I um, love that grit and challenge. Absolutely. Yeah. I like that. And so I've referenced a couple of times now my negative view of the word power. Um, and I would say that been true until even quite recently and I suppose that's because I see time and time again the destruction that power can cause so I do want to briefly tackle um those who do abuse the power that they have and I've seen it in organizations I've worked for I've seen it in wider sectors that I've been in we obviously see it in the news and the media and played out in in social media for example you know leaders who use their position of power to silence other people leaders who bully and intimidate people beneath them to achieve an outcome Uh, leaders who favor and reward those who do and say the right things and And I know, as you do, that it happens a lot more than it is ever called out for. And I can only assume it's not called out as much as it should be because of the power dynamics. And we've spoken before about that knock-on effect that that it has on people. Um, And there's a negative influence, isn't there? People feeling like they've got to behave in the same way to succeed. I've seen people moan about, you know, this person or that person. And then they've gone and blown smoke up their ass when they're around them to get promotion or to get what they want from their portfolio or, you know, to get favoured in some way. And the cycle continues forever. Um, And I suppose that, that we talk about grit and challenge, that's that there in me, that fire is there because we talk about this being the year of change, certainly from our perspective, we've we've labelled it that. But is it? you know is this a pipe dream are we on you know looking for the unicorn in cloud cuckoo land going oh this is something we can change or do we need to recognize that you have to have some kind of gamification i suppose if you want to succeed oh god no like so oh there's so much of me that wants to be really hopeful and say yes it's all out there for the taking we can change this we can absolutely you know really challenge those negative power dynamics that come into play um so I I want to say yes and I want to be part of that change 100% for sure but I think it's so nuanced isn't it because for some individuals it will depend what success looks like for them so if success for an individual looks like getting to the highest possible positional power that they can with the best paycheck and, you know, whatever, whatever it is that's driving that person, then actually there probably is an element of gamification in it because you are probably going to find yourselves, if you are that person, doing exactly what you said, which is even if some of it feels uncomfortable for you and you don't like the way the power dynamics are playing out, you still play into them because individually for you it's going to get you to where you want to be in your career for other people there might be more at play there because it might be more about their professional and personal integrity their morals their values which means they're not gonna get into that kind of I'm just gonna play the game to get the big job because actually that's not what is their 
individual driver and not what feels important to them. And I think so much of this challenge is about individuals rather than about a a collective, if I'm honest, because it's about people either feeling like I want to speak out because I don't feel like what's going on here is is right or it's about people going I won't speak out because I just want to pay the mortgage so I'll be I'll be complicit through not doing anything or it will be the opposite which is I'm going to play into all of those negative stereotypes and play this power game and be part of that power crazy power trip because I want my next promotion so it's Mm. it's really challenging to kind of work out how we make that culture shift and I think the thing that I have found more and more upsetting I guess as I've moved through um, my career and and been in that leadership space is actually when I see people challenge and call out the poor use of power more often than not and I mean very much more often than not what happens is the person who's prepared to make that challenge and say this doesn't feel right this doesn't sit comfortably with me we're not doing the right thing here often ends up being the person that leaves that organization yeah either because they are pushed out because their face doesn't fit and they haven't said the right the right thing I use the they haven't said the right thing or because they realize that the the culture in that organization and the toxicity that's playing through just isn't healthy or right for them and that they're never going to feel like they can influence and have impact in that space and I feel like that's where I feel slightly worried and depressed about how we create this movement of change because the people who are in organizations sometimes who really want to make that change happen for various different reasons don't stay there to help make it happen yeah you see you see this there are really good people stepping away from um positions of power and influence because it's not it's not worth it and it's almost like are there more of the wrong uns as it were <laughs> that are, are, are rising to the top you know is proportionately have we got it so out of sync that it's you know we talk about that malcolm gladwell book with um the tipping point is the tipping point such that there are so few of those that are willing to do the fight and to to use their power to to make this change happen um are they just getting shouts out or overshadowed or or undermined and all of those things or just personally don't have the energy to kind of continue fighting which is not a bad thing mm. um yeah it's it's a hard it's it's a hard one to know if it will change and I, that feels a bit depressing to me i know i feel sad i feel like i might cry a little bit and then there's a bit of me that goes How do we harness all of those amazing leaders who've been in that position where they're like, no, my integrity is telling me this is wrong. I've spoken out and now I can't stay either because my position's too untenable, I'm being pushed out, or quite frankly, I can't cope with this toxic nature. How do we get all of those people in one space and start creating some new organization and some new leadership approaches that harnesses all of that good? Because... I do think it's there and I, and I think probably some, even my own self, and I think I've mentioned this in examples before um, on the podcast, I've even found myself in some situations earlier on in my leadership journey, rather than speaking out, just not saying anything because that yeah. feels easier and that makes it, it, not that it puts me in a more comfortable position, but it's just like head down. I don't want to get mm. involved in the politics of mm. these power dynamics that are playing out. But on reflection, I look back at that and think, well, that makes me complicit because I haven't challenged it. Mm. And I imagine there's probably quite a, a swell of people who are in that position where they're not blowing smoke up people's asses and just trying to get the next promotion by going along with the bad behaviors and bad power Mm, dynamic mm. but they're equally not challenging it they're just sitting somewhere quietly in the middle and I just wonder Mm. how many people are finding themselves in in that space as leaders it's it the other thing that I'm that I'm struggling with is this sense of there is almost there's there's more um discussion and debate and awareness around good leadership qualities and what you need and and values-led leadership and all the stuff that we talk about we're not necessarily the first to raise some of these things as Mm. as being good for leadership so they they can almost become buzzwords that people use and in the last fortnight there's been another list of top chief executives that have been published for a sector 
And, you know, some of the criteria when I was looking at it was, oh, they're demonstrating values, led leadership, blah, blah, blah. Now, I've looked down that list, and I'm not saying this categorically for everyone on their list. I'm sure there's some really great leaders that have been um, nominated. But there are leaders there who, to the external world, have been chosen because they are seen to be good, great leaders. Yeah, I know internally that they're not that there's stuff going on, that they're playing all the power play dynamic, blah, blah, blah. I know people who um, were part of the decision-making panels to to decide the ratings also don't live by the values of which they were judging. Um, and so it's just perpetuating this, this kind of everyone's playing the game. Yeah. Oh, my God, I feel so depressed. Sorry. This, this is not where I feel like we've got to kind of get to a... But it's that calling it out, isn't it? How do you mm. call that out? How do you ch- how do you change the rules of the game? That's what we're talking mm. about here, isn't it? Mm-hmm. How do you change the rule of rules of the game so it doesn't become about rewarding the bad behaviours and playing into all of those negative power dynamics? But it comes it becomes about more of the positives that we've talked around about stepping into some of those other types of power for the greater good and to have a positive impact and influence for other people. Mm-hmm. It's hard. But that, really that goes hard. back to some of the conversation. It is. It goes back to some of the earlier conversations that we had, and um, probably at the very beginning of starting the podcast when we were talking about what what do organisations need to do differently, looking at their recruitment processes. How are they really t- testing the um, the values and the behaviours, and and looking at skills more than just their expertise and and their knowledge, but actually the broader mm. skills that a, a, a good leader needs to have. It's about how organisations are supporting leaders and the right kinds of leaders, and not doing the usual tick box exercises when it comes to things like diversity and inclusion and training programs and and and. Uh, all of those types of things that that need to happen but it just feels so slow (laughs) (laughs) it does feel slow doesn't it but then I guess we are talking about a cultural shift in leadership aren't we so not even in one organization but in leadership as a as this great collective up here and we know it takes time so I don't know what the research say if it's the latest research but it takes like seven years to change the culture in one organization so actually Mm. we have to start somewhere we have to hold on to the positives that are happening we have to try and find ways to harness and nurture and support those leaders who demonstrate the values that we think are really important and and just, I guess, keep trying to plug away at that. Because if we give up, then we're complicit again in this, yeah. this horrible dynamic of poor leadership yeah. that's all about the wrong sort of power. So to, to I feel I feel like we've not resolved this one. And we're going, <laughs> we're going to, to come back to this, aren't we? Revisit. And we'd absolutely love people who are listening to this to share their views and thoughts and, and ideas for what can be the difference this this time around I suppose but to wrap up in our how-to how how do you really start to leverage your power what should leaders and I suppose organizations be learning through maybe the discussion that we've had to support the right kind of powers to be put into play so I feel like firstly for me it's about doing that reframe so if you're not comfortable with the concept of power uh, finding a way to get comfortable with it because whether you like it or not as we've said there you're going to have various different levels and elements mm. of power whatever they might look like so if you need to reframe that and think about it in a different way so whether that's about impact influence whatever um, maybe start to do some of that thinking and then I think for leaders it's about understanding where you actually do have the most power right now um, mm. how that's playing out how you are evidencing that like what impact that's having on others um, and starting to understand that impact so actually if you harnessed all of that for good um, what would that look like but also identifying maybe where you don't have as much power as perhaps you might need to deliver on your purpose and to have that positive impact Um, Because if you can identify some of that space, so maybe I've said sometimes I've not stepped into my uh, expert power 
I've not I've not done that so actually if I've identified that what action can I take to do more of that Mm. to help me to achieve my purpose and goals so I think it's about that identification and understanding of where you're at in some of those power power what are we calling them like categories I guess and kind of where you can do more of the good stuff that's having the positive impact and where you can see that there are gaps that you might need to build on probably feels like some good first steps for me yeah I love I love that and from from me in terms of the learning that leaders I suppose can take from from this conversation um it isn't so much about deciding what power you fit into but maybe it's about focusing more on the types of relationships that you're building being aware of your kind of personal agenda so that you're not abusing the power that you've got things like working on those broader skills like your communications and your connection which again is these are all power-based things but it's about that reframe of how you use it and then looking at you know how you use your power whatever that might be for good in some way we talked about it in other episodes but there's that concept of how how are you lifting as you you rise as a leader which I love um, and I think that's something that we can all do regardless of where we are in, in an organisation that feels like a more positive way to end the episode Lee lifting as we rise I don't think there's anybody really who wouldn't want to get behind that is there well, maybe there um, is yeah. <laughs> Maybe some of those power hungry leaders won't, but I feel like that's what we're all about. So that's it. That's a more positive end. But as you said, I don't think we've reached a resolution or a solution. And I'm sure it will no. be a topic we come back to in many different shapes and forms as we continue our how to take the lead discussion. Yeah. So that's it. That's the end of the episode. Um, if you like this, please leave a rating or a review. I still can't say it. it's been three <laughs> series. Get involved in the conversations over on Substack. Like, follow, share, all of that stuff would be brilliant. And um, yeah, come and DM us with your stories of power being used for, for good and bad. We would love to know. Don't feel like you've got to share it to the world if you're not comfortable yet. But um, if we can help be a mouthpiece for you, we will happily do so. So until next time. Thanks for listening to today's episode. Don't forget to hit follow and share the show with someone you know. Oh, that rhymes. A rating or review will be much appreciated. If you're looking for some leadership inspiration, why not get a free copy of our recommended reading list? Visit howtotakethelead.com to download. Until next week, get out there and take the lead.